Motorsport auctions are the global marketplace to buy and sell used race and rally cars, parts and associated equipment. Visit their website for more details. Good morning everybody, welcome to another edition of Boswell Race Roundup. We're here today at Sebring International for round 8 of the 2015 BMW Z4 and Mazda MX-5 Championship. It's another night race in the calendar for this event, with Van Delden taking pole ahead of Barry Bird and Simon Underhill. Tony Bird qualifies 4th ahead of Galenicky and Rowland, with Ian Thorne and Phil Gregory next, Ryan Walker in 9th for Motorsport Auctions. Onto the MX-5s, it's Adam Thorne on pole once again ahead of Jan Malesva and Alan McCain. We've seen some fantastic battles between them three all season. David Waldock a new driver in 13th ahead of Darren Ford and Martin Brennan, Ricky Green for MKB Racing's in 16th ahead of Scott Malcolm, Chris Buttrell in 18th ahead of Francis Winnell and Ian Robson not setting a time. Now as you may have seen iRacing have had a few problems the past few weeks which meant that we had to reschedule round 8. This is the first part of a double header with round 9 Monza coming straight after this round up. This week's on board comes from Barry Bird for Tech Speed Racing in the BMW Z4, a 2 minute .516, let's jump on board with him now. Barry has come out of Sunset Bend then, that's turn 17 and on to the start finish straight here at Sebring, about to start his qualifying lap. Now heading our way down the main straight, the pit lane on the right hand side. The first corner is a left hander, so nice and steady through here. Try not to run out too wide, otherwise you do end up on the grass. Just hitting it nicely by the cone and onto the rumble strip. Now down a short straight towards turn number 3, 4 and 5. Into another left hander, then a quick right flick. Then up into turn 5 now and then we're on to... Another straight, this is Big Ben straight. This leads all the way down towards the hairpin, probably one of the fastest parts of the course. As we go in towards turn seven, it is one of the slowest corners of the circuit. Under the bridge, look for the white line across the road and start your break in there. Into this right-hander, again it flicks slightly, but this time to the left-hand side. Coming up onto Fangio between turns eight and nine. This makes its way all the way down to turn ten, which is another hard on the brakes corner, another right-hander. So we're going to watch Barry as he comes down here, again getting his braking absolutely spot on. This one isn't as tight as turn number 7, through here and down onto Collier, this is the left hander through turn 11. We now make our way up to turn 12 and towards 13 which is Tower, this is a 90 degree right hander, you can take this with some speed though. Now it's time to get on the gas and see how fast you can get down here towards turn number 14, that is Bishop. We start opening out onto more tarmac and less grass as we come around here. This keeps flowing nicely, the driver's loving it around here in the qualifying session. This is through turn number 15, moving on to Le Mans corner, turn 16. You need a really good entrance into here, not too deep into there, otherwise you're going to pick up a penalty. Now onto the back straight, time to get the power down once again. Now we're heading up towards Sunset Bend. Just in the distance you can see one of the Acorn printing cars, that's Van Delden in the Z4. So Barry decided to come through on the right hand side, almost got squeezed out here, maybe affected his qualifying time a little bit. Sunset Bend seems to carry on for absolutely forever and here we are back onto the main straight, once again getting the power down and coming across the line. So Van Delden's the favourite here once again, but will Barry Bird or Simon Underhill upset that for Tech Speed Racing or Bentley boys? Let's head down to the race and find out. Acorn Printing are the team wear supplier for Bosra and have even produced clothing items for President Clinton. See the video description to learn more. The start of our very first visit here to Sebring, a night race, it is Van Delden from Baird and Simon Underhill. Let's see how they get off the line then, the top three all get away well. Van Delden stays in the lead, Barry Bird and Simon Underhill are catching up fast though. Simon deciding to move to the middle and try and make a move between the two of them. Now heading into the first left-hander, Van Delden takes the defensive line, Simon Underhill tries to go around the outside and he has done it, he's got the lead of the race. Barry Baird dropped down to third place and that's Martin Gwenicke making a move up the inside of David Rowland into the next left-hander. He's got it secured then so he splits up the MKB Racing and Tech Speed Racing cars. Tony Bird's been demoted two or three places as well. Going back on board now for the start of the MX-5, this is with Chris Butterill. Scott Malcolm just to the left hand side of Chris, Ricky Green in front and Martin Brandon for Tim Clockwork. Fantastic start for Chris, he's coming alongside Martin now, hoping to go around the outside up towards turn number one. Backing off a little bit, don't want to cause any accidents as we go through the first few corners on the first lap here at Sebring. So Chris eases off, the tech speed racing cars come back through. Chris getting it a little bit sideways, almost lost it there. Jan Malezova is off track up ahead for Motorsport Auctions, the tech speed racing cars go around the outside of him. Coming into the next left hander now, can Chris make the pass as well? So let's find out, Chris around the outside, can't get in front of Jan there. 
Well, the traffic backing up. Chris taking avoiding action so he doesn't go into the back of Molesva. He does then make the move around the outside. That puts him up a couple of places already here on the first lap. Staying with the action on the first lap, our pole man Van Delden. We're going to go on board with him now. He'd been demoted to third place. Barry Bird had managed to get past. Van Delden will be fancying his chances here at Sebring to try and maintain his good run in this event. Don't forget he is our main contender for driver of the year now. That's pretty much done and dusted for 2015. Coming through the back part of the course now, coming with the final right-hander before the back straight. Van Delden try to get the power down too early, cuts it onto the grass and puts it into the wall. There's damage to the car, you can see from the steering that Van Delden's going to need a pit stop from that, so all the traffic's coming past from the Z4s, putting Van Delden to the back of the grid. Plenty going on on this first lap here at Sebring. We're now following David Waldock, one of our newcomers. He was being chased by Darren Ford through the final few turns. He then power slid the car. Couldn't keep it in a straight line though, spun it and clipped the side of Darren Ford's car. That put him facing the wrong way, David waiting for the traffic to pass before rejoining the race. Going on to lap number two now, we're going to watch the Z4s. This was Tony Baird and David Rowland, it was Tech Speed Racing versus MKV Racing. You can see just ahead is Martin Gwenicke for Acorn Printing, there's contact between them though. Tony Bird coming off worse, him spinning the car. Again waiting for traffic to come through before spinning it back round the right way and carrying on with his race. Both Tony and his brother Barry had been enjoying good results with Bodra since joining this event. Ryan Walker was another driver having a good season. He's driving for motorsport auctions this time. He was chasing Phil Gregory and Ian Thorne in the Z4s. But then coming into traffic, hard on the brakes, he misjudged it totally. He spun the car, lucky not to collect the wall. No pit stop needed, but he has lost time on the two in front of him. Both Ryan and Jan Molesova, consistent and ever-present for motorsport auctions. This is looking back at Barry Bird from on board with Simon Underhill. Bit of a wobble there coming onto the back straight. That cost him a bit of time and allowed Barry to catch up. Staying with this, this was for the lead of the race as well. So, all important results here. If Tech Speed Racing can make a move and get up into the lead of the race. Swap cameras now. You can see that Barry has got up the inside. Simon's got no answer there coming into the final right-hander. Barry taking the lead for Tech Speed Racing. Fantastic for them. Don't forget that this championship, there is a mandatory pit stop for all four tyres and fuel if needed. Will that make an impact into the result of the race? We'll find out. Back to the MX-5s. This is Waldock and Ian Robson. Robson getting it wrong through there and heavily into the wall. A pit stop required for Ian to repair the car. Back to the front two, we're now on board with Simon Underhill in second place, Barry Bird just up ahead in first. They started to come up on traffic, the MX-5s, so we're going to stay with these and show you just how difficult it can be to get through it all. So the first, the pass Chris Butterall, just up ahead there is Darren Ford, Jan Elizabeth and Ricky Green. This will cost both drivers time as the third place drivers tries to catch up with the front two. So we'll pass Darren Ford now, this is now Jan Elizabeth that will come in past. Ricky Green just up ahead. Most of the MX-5 drivers now use the Z4s in the rear view mirrors, keeping out of the way and allowing the leaders to come past. Staying with Simon, you can see he's right on the back of Barry Bird's car now, deciding to go to the inside of the track, try and take the line through here as we come into the final few corners. Barry just on the left hand side of Simon, coming into here, maintains the outside line and also maintains the lead. And it's been a fantastic battle so far between these two for the lead of the race, coming through to complete this lap. To the battle for the lead in the MX-5s, this was Adam Thorne and Alan McCain right behind him. Through the first corner, Alan had carried a bit more speed through there. You can see Barry Bird and Simon Underhill catching up fast as they'd completed their lap. So Alan takes the lead there from Adam Thorne. This is another battle that's been fantastic throughout this championship between Thorne and McCain. If you've been watching the others, it has been close knit from start to finish every race with them. Barry Bird and Simon Underhill now come in through. The MX-5s keeping out the way on the right hand side, allowing the leaders to pass. Chris Butterall had been gathering ground on Darren Ford for quite a while, staying right on the back of him, he was then going to make a pass. Just up ahead was Jan Malazva and Ricky Green, now their own battle between them had caused them to slow each other down, so Chris taking advantage of that as well, as was Darren Ford. Chris makes the move now on Darren, you can see how quickly they are closing on the two in front. Now don't forget that Bowden Solutions have been leading the team championship for quite a while, pretty much since round number one. However, Acorn Printing, if they get a couple of good results into these final few rounds, there is a chance they could leapfrog them and take first place from them. With Van Delden doing so well, it is certainly a possibility. At the front in the MX-5s, Alan McCain was still holding off Adam Thorne as one of the Bowden Solutions Z4s come through. Alan then got it wrong into the final couple of corners, almost clipped the wall there. Adam can see what's going on obviously, slows down a little bit so he doesn't collect Alan. Alan into the wall and needing repairs in the pits. Riding on board once again with Simon Underhill, he was still chasing Barry Bird for the lead of the race, trying to maintain the small advantage 
Barry out in front, Simon going a little bit wide there. And into the next corner though, Simon was ever so pleased to see Barry getting it wrong on the brakes. Barry almost collecting Simon, Simon into the lead of the race. Chris Butterell was still going strong, trying to catch Jan Malesver and Ricky Green. Now with the Z4 traffic coming through, that would allow Chris to catch up even more. You see another of the Acorn printing Z4s coming through, right on the back of Green and Malesver. They pull out the way to let the Z4 through. That slows them down even more. Chris now right on the back of Ricky Green. I don't think that either Jan or Ricky were expecting Chris and Darren to catch them that quickly, but the Z4s really did slow them down. Chris now having a look around the outside of Ricky Green through the left-hander. Almost neck and neck, Chris almost alongside. Jan still out ahead, a few car lengths in front. Chris now coming to the inside to try and force the move through here. We've got another right-hander coming up as well, so he has got the inside line for that. None of these cars have pitted yet, so Chris decided that once he'd got past Ricky here, he would make his pit stop, get it out of the way, and hopefully get back out onto the race in front of the traffic. Speaking of pit stops, this is on board with Barry Bird. He'd just completed his mandatory stop, trying to get out as quickly as possible and get that limiter back off. Van Delden wasn't that far behind, though. As Barry comes out and rejoins the track, you'll see Van Delden does come through and takes the lead of the race in the Z4s. Van Delden has already pitted, though, after his first lap incident. So that meant that was out of the way, he didn't need to pit again. Hopefully now he can stay out in front and take the lead of the race to the finish line. Phil Gregory and Ian Thorne were having a fantastic race in the Z4s, but they were coming up on traffic, the MX-5s. That slowed down Ian Thorne enough for Phil Gregory to make the move up the inside of him. This was the battle for 7th and 8th, and with Bowden Solutions leading the team championship up to now, every single point would count for them. After the pit stops, Ricky Green had come out in front of Jan Malesver. Jan right on the back of Ricky coming up towards Turn 1. Chris Butterall up ahead for the Acorn printing team. Going into Turn 1 though, Ricky Green got it wrong through here. Power slide for him and into the wall. Jan avoiding him and taking a place from Ricky in the MX-5s. Back to the battle between Ian Thorne and Phil Gregory. Now you can see Phil up in the distance. He had taken 7th place from Ian earlier on. Ian then power slid it through one of the corners and put it off and into the wall. Not too much damage caused to the car. Ian reversing up and rejoining the race. To our eventual race winner, it was Van Delden once again for Acorn Printing. They are having an absolutely fantastic season. So Van Delden coming through to complete his final lap through the traffic in the MX-5s. Congratulations to Matt, another win under his belt. That has pretty much cemented his Drive of the Year standings as well. Simon Lundhill crossing the line just behind in second. Bowden Solutions produce the very best load cell mods and pedal adapters to use with Thrustmaster wheels. You can order yours now at bowdensolutions.com. So only two rounds remain now, now that we've done here at Sebring. To give you a roundup on the race results then, it was Van Delden who took the win ahead of Simon Underhill and Barry Baird. His brother Tony Baird was in fourth ahead of Martin Gwenicke and David Rowland. The second of the Bentley boys, Zed Fours in seventh with Phil Gregory ahead of Ian Thorne and Ryan Walker with Adam Thorne in the lead of the MX-5s. Chris Butterell records his best ever finish, second in class ahead of Jan Malesver and Alan McCain. Dan Ford finished 14th ahead of Scott Malcolm and our new racer David Waldock. Martin Brandon's in 17th ahead of Ricky Green, he's ahead of Ian Robson, and well, lastly, it's Francis Winnell for Acorn Printing. To the overall driver's standings, Adam Thorne still leads from Van Delden. There's 10 points in it there with Simon Underhill in third. Martin Gornicki remains in fourth. McCain moves up a place to fifth ahead of Scott Malcolm. Darren Ford climbed three places ahead of Phil Gregory, while Ricky Green and Jan Malesver both move up four. Acta and Talia both drop down ahead of Barry Bird and Neil Bamba. Russell Barnes the biggest loser this week. He drops five places. In Thorne's next, Chris Butrell rises up three points ahead of David Rowland and Ryan Walker. Martin Brandon and Francis Winnell next. Gary Bradshaw didn't feature tonight. He was sat in 22nd ahead of Brendan Tills and Ian Robson. Tony Bird climbs up one place ahead of Jonathan Beresford, with Jason Cox and David Waldock at the bottom of the list. To our team standings, well, it's still Bowden Solutions out in front ahead of Acorn Printing, they're 23 points ahead. Bentley Boys Racing move up to third ahead of MKB Racing, they're 51 points behind. Motorsport Auctions sitting fifth ahead of Tech Speed Racing, with Team Clockwork dropping one to seven. That's it from us from Sebring. We'll see you again soon for Monza. That is round nine before the final round at Laguna Sanka. Thank you ever so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.